Hello, hello. I'm going to be doing a video on mosaics. This will actually be a two part series, probably. This first one will be on planning the mosaic, and the next one will be on processing the mosaic. So, for planning, I've been using this tool, Astro Mosaic, which you can find at this URL here, and the link is in the Discord as well. This has a couple of services built in, but we, of course, want to use SLU. So, whenever you load the site, this is what you'll see. It comes M M65 pops up automatically and all of this information. So go ahead and just change this to SLU. And then you can choose which telescope you want. So of course, uh, this will depend on whatever is being chosen for the particular object. The main difference is the field of view and how that changes. So T1 is, is much more narrow, for example, than T3, as you can see. So the benefit of that is that with T3, you can use less panels and you get a larger area. And the trade-off, of course, is that sometimes image quality is better on some of the other scopes, just depending on the night, it seems like. Um, but, you know, generally, I think T2 is pretty good, but it, it would have a smaller field of view than T3. So for this example, we're just going to use T3 since we want to keep the mosaic rather small. And while this is a nice mosaic in and of itself, I think we probably want to look at something more nebulous, but let's just go with one of the ones that we've been talking about in the chat. So we'll do North American Nebula, NGC 7000. So I just type it in here, hit enter, or you can hit refresh, and it will pop it up for you. Now this, by default, just shows one big box. If you go to view, instead of field of view, go to mosaic grid. And that will actually lay it out as the mosaic and show you all of the panels that it's going to be outputting from this tool. This covers a good majority of it, but it might look a little bit better if we get one more row. So on grid size, we can leave three as the X because X is of course horizontal and then y we can bump that up to four and hit refresh and now we're covering pretty much the whole object so that looks pretty good and so a three by four grid will yield 12 panels so it would take 12 missions to do this it's also some nice little built-in tools for target visibility but uh, i know this is pretty much visible if you look up here in the top left of this box, you can see coordinates. If you are to double click somewhere and then leave the mouse from that area of the window, you can actually get the coordinates to stay there. You can type these coordinates into this box and it will pull it up. So if you want to center it differently, you could double click there, for example. And in this box, then type in 2058. 53.636 and then plus 44 21.4 and it might be a little bit hard to tell but it did just shift down very slightly so it recentered it anyway. so that is one way that you can kind of move this around a little bit and it can be kind of a handy tool so if we scroll down we see the actual output of what this is and this is all of the coordinates for the 12 missions that will be needed to make this mosaic so what we do with these is now head to slu so from slu from any page just click on the telescopes button and then you can go to mission setup now since we chose the object by telescope then we need to schedule the mission by telescope as well so we're going to go to by telescope and reserve a slot. Now this is probably not an optimal time, but that's okay. This is just a test. Um, you could check the optimal time by going back to Azure Mosaic and looking at the visibility chart. Top one is Canary and the bottom one is Chile. Let's see, so anywhere between 22.30 and 2.45 is fine. And then after that, up until 5.10, so 
this is probably not the greatest slot, but we'll do it anyway. So category. This is one thing that you may want to uh, Google beforehand if, if you're not sure what type of object it is, but um, this is an emission nebula, so we'll choose that. No, we won't. Sorry. <laughs> so we pick telescope first, and then we have to do coordinates. So that's what I always forget. Telescope and then coordinates. And it will remind you how many you have of your advanced missions, because these are advanced missions, not, not basic missions like the SU-1000. So from here, from object type, now you choose emission nebula. In this pane in general, you can either type in coordinates in these boxes or in just these two boxes. And this, these two bottom ones are what are, we're going to be using. So in the Astro Mosaic, all these are laid out as in, in just the order that they need to go into the site. So for panel one, the right ascension will be this number. So I'm just going to copy it. And paste it. And then do the same for the other. And you can see when it says DEC there that that's decimal, so it's expecting this decimal notation as opposed to the hours, minute, seconds notation such as this. So it wants the decimal, which is what the program here nicely outputs for us. So that's all set up. So also when you plug these in, you'll see that it converts it to the hours, minutes, seconds, but that's just a fun fact and not necessary. So the general naming scheme that I've been using is if these are 12 panels, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, or here would be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's of course arbitrary. It could be the other way, but just because I'm American and English biased and that's how I read, I just go one, two, three, and then the next line, five, six. So as long as everyone's the same in that convention, then it makes sense. So. Other than that, we can call this NGC 7000, panel one. And that was a bad slot to choose. So if you can't see it, it will say this object cannot be imaged at the same time, which is not a problem. We just go back. And now let's scroll down a little bit further here. May need to go to the next night actually. Let me go ahead and go to Saturday, July 2nd. So we check again. Anything after 2230 is going to be pretty good, but uh, obviously higher without being crazy high is, is best usually. So I'm going to try to pick somewhere around one. And look at that. We can just pick one. So by coordinates, again, we'll paste that in there. I already had that copy from earlier. And I'll just go copy the number again. Name it again. And you see 7,000 panel one. And if this ever happens where you can't check the visibility, and I do that a lot of times, it's because you have to select the target target object type first. So emission nebulae, check visibility. Oh, really? Okay. Let's try one more time. Five telescope. Canary three. Tomorrow. Let's just pick. 2240. I could have tested this before making the video, but that would have made life too easy. So we're doing it live, and that's okay. Paste, and now you'll see it three times, so hopefully everyone can remember. So it's just demonstration, not accidents, just planned demonstration, of course. And you can see the seven thousand. 
Hooray, it's visible. OK, so these presets all do different things. Generally, for any nebula, I just choose faint nebula, even if it is bright. Um, I believe that the fit files come out the same regardless. I could be wrong about that. I believe that that's true. I think this only affects the PNGs that you first see. But anyway, I'm going to choose Faint Nebula here. Preview the mission and schedule it. So that's the basics. Um, you would just, can, if you wanted to continue on, you could just pick the next set, plug that into a new mission, and keep going. Now I want to show one other tool here that could be helpful if you just really can't get this quite where you want it. And that's telescopius.com. It's uh, free to sign up, but you actually don't even need to sign up, so I'm not signed in here. But it'll still let me do it. One thing to note is to go under observatory settings here. Well, actually, if you just want to telescopius.com, you'd end up here. So go to toolbox and telescope simulator. And it brings you to this uh, thing that kind of looks like the one on Astro Mosaic, but the difference is that it'll let you move the background around while leaving your chosen view the same. So this is helpful if you want to try to, you know, really fine tune an alignment in a mosaic. So just as a note to make sure to click on a observatory setting, click on whatever location is here, which is probably somewhere close to where you are because it'll try to auto pull it. And you can just do edit location manually. And to put in Canary, you can find that information right here in the guides and the Canary Island Observatory guide where there is a Google map portion. So I just copied this end part and I just pasted that right in here. And it pulled it up. Then all of that would change to these settings from whatever time zone it, had, it was where you are in your latitude and longitude. And then save, and that way it knows where you're imaging from. Now the other thing is that this is not the same as the uh, telescope, any of the telescopes in Canary Islands. This is actually this is my telescope. Uh, it has the settings saved even though I signed in, which is kind of fun. This is what I would see in my backyard scope, but that is not anywhere close to what we see in Canary Islands. So how do we find that? You just pick whichever telescope you want. So here is Canary 3, deep sky astrograph. Here we'll see that the focal length is 620 millimeters. So here we can just type in 620. See that the aperture is 11 inches, which is quite large. And you can do millimeters to inches there and then put it in 11. And that will update the telescope information. And now we need to do the other part of this, which is the camera information, because the telescope is just one aspect of this whole puzzle. So with my camera, it would look like this. We'll see that with the SUV camera, it will not look like that. So first is putting in the resolution. So what we want to do is it's going to be 4144 by 2822. Here we put 4144. Here we put 2022. And then there's the sensor size. And the sensor size is given to us right here 19.1 by 13. Nineteen point one by 13. And you can see that that just changed it quite a lot here. I don't think that they give the rotation as a spec on the site. They do not. So it's kind of OK. Um, the rotation is just literally how it's rotated with respect to 
the either the celestial grid or the horizon either way um, I'm just gonna set this to zero because I think they try to align the north generally it, it should kind of work out anyway as long as your mosaic is somewhat of a square then it, it, it should pretty much end up being the same and it'll spit out the correct Rotation once you get the fit files back because that's embedded in the fit picture header. I'm going to be corrected if necessary, but I think it's worked out for me when I've done this here. So right now, this is a one by one, meaning it is just one panel. And for uh, M101, that's fine. That's what I loaded by default. But let's go back to the same thing we were doing before. And you see 7,000, just type it in there. It'll pop it up with the name, North American Nebula. And now you can see it looks very similar because they're using the same sky survey, I believe. These are both the, yeah, the DSS colored survey, so they are the same image source. So instead of one by one, let's try making this the same as we had before and three by four. Uh, it's important to note here, this may not be set to 20% when you use Telescopius uh, by default. So change this to 20%. It is set to 20% in Astro Mosaic by default. And that's this part right here where it's like these um, tiny regions. That's, it's the overlap. So this is one panel. This is the next panel. And this is 20% of overlap between the two. And that's uh, very necessary and helpful for doing the alignment of these panels when you're trying to put them all back together after you have the individual images. So make sure that's set to 20%. Don't turn on rotate panes because um, that would require a rotator, which the cameras do not have, and that's okay. You see that with the 20% overlap, these actually aren't perfectly rectangular, and that's because this is they're rotating around the sky slightly, so with the overlap amount, it doesn't matter because they'll be able to fit together in the end. So that's not quite centered, I don't think, so we can kind of nudge that around there. And so what this one helps you do is really, you know, if you want to make it artsy and put, you know, this nice region in the bottom right, you can do that because you can just move it around wherever you want and it, and that's where you're going to be imaging so you can really kind of make it look just like you want but i'm just going to center it like that maybe you'd want to do it like that actually where you end up getting more star but you still get all the features there so you could do some interesting things um once you're happy with it just click on this Click on the uh, grid mosaic settings again, where we set the grid. And here you'll see something that looks quite a lot like what we saw in Astro Mosaic, which is all the coordinates. So you can either copy them individually, which works just fine. So you just hit copy to clipboard and then paste that in the slew. If you want, you can also download the CSV file, and then you can use that in something like uh, Nina, Nighttime Engineering and Astronomy, which uh, is a program that I use on the desktop quite often for controlling telescope and has some other things like sky visibility simulations. Um, if you happen to have an ASCII here like I do, that's exactly what I do. I just hit copy CSV on my phone because this loads fine on the phone. And then I, I open up the SAR app and I paste it right in and it loads all these panels into a plan that it'll just image one by one. So that's helpful too. Anyway, the main point of showing you this, because you could have stopped watching this video probably five, seven minutes ago now, is just to show how this uh, other tool can work to do this as well and also can help with some framing. That's about it and I will start working on the next video for processing. Thanks for watching.